So, uh, Final Fantasy VII spoiler cast incoming in five, four, three, two, one. Spoils on. Spoiler, I think the game is fucking incredible. Uh, I have a finger to raise about a couple of things. Okay. Um, there are... Oh. Technicals? Hello? Did you mute me? You're, you're here. <laughs> Am I? Yeah, you're here. Mm. Oh, apparently I'm muted so I can say anything I want. No, I you're can, good. I'm free. No, you're no. not. You're here. All right. So yeah, I have I have uh, I have some minor complaints. I have some um, I have some complaints. Um, yeah. I I have some uh, I have some thoughts. Do you think I have, uh, big enjoyments? Yes. Uh, well, first, let's answer that man's question. Um, the question was about uh, what was it? It was uh, uh, who can you think? Who can you think of? That has done horrible things, but you're like, oh man, they're so cool. Yeah, Reno and Rude. The fucking um, Turks are had... like, how are you supposed? Like, here's the thing, I am someone who's always been, been like, man, they're cool. They're so cool. They're cool. They, of course, they're cool. Right? They now ju they're, they just they're dudes who wear suits in this JRPG. They got a theme like, they're and they're easy going and they're they they're, got snaps and they're and they're they're cute and they got the fucking you know, they got the whole suave effect going on. Sunglasses and the the, the classy. Da, da, da. Da, da, you da. know, it's a whole thing. Yeah. And now we but... gotta look and go. I am going to, with almost glee, in, in, in go and hit the button that literally homicides everybody. Listen. It's it's we have a story in which in the original Reno and Rude and Sang and Elena were almost never portrayed as fun or goofy in, in FF7 original, right? But then everything after that, you got to see way more of the Turks. You saw oh, uh, you hung out with Sang in Crisis Core. Uh in you, you, in in the later parts of in in the in the Rufus age. They would come around and it would be all hijinks. Wouldn't it? No. Hmm. I feel like the vibe. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm. I'm. I'm not remembering the vibe, but I. I feel like they're like appearance... in Wu Tai. They're chill, but they're like professional chill. Catching some drinks. Yeah. Um. But. It's it's always it's been difficult to get away from like remember when okay in Advent Children Cloud meets up with Reno yeah and they have like a goofy little haha -ha moment right and then you have to remember that uh, Reno is the person who essentially pushed the button yes. on the the FF seven equivalent of nine eleven yes uh Hiroshima <laughs> yeah yeah he, he killed like. 10 to 100,000 people with the push of a button. And uh, here's, okay, so here's a question, right, about that moment in the way that they did it here in FF7, a remake. When he's standing at the machine and they and you're about to show down and then Cloud gets up in his face, Cloud looks at him and says, press it. Do you understand what that is? The way that I interpret it as the instant you turn around to press it, I'm gonna stab you in the back. I think I think like I think it's supposed to be I dare you to press it. Yeah, I dare you. I but that's not what he actually says. He looks at him and he goes, press it. You know, and then he goes, yeah. Hey, hey, no need to be hasty. And then they start the fight, right? Yeah. Now you I'm thinking in my head about how you're gonna have these little loose, goofy moments with them, 
at how you're supposed to hang out with them for the rest of this story. And they're the yeah. cool guys with the music playing. They get two remixes of the, the, the damn theme. And I'm like, what? How are we going to get here, right? And the answer is interesting. So we start up with way before, way before the play, we get to meet them and they're they're like cool but chill. Literally, just there's professional. a there is a section of the game dedicated to Rude is a good person. Yeah, he's not bad. Aerith literally tells you Rude is not a bad guy. Yes. So you're so and, that's set up in such a way. And then we have them flying to the plate where their orders are do a nine eleven, and they're both flying there, going, bro, this sucks. I don't want to do this. And then he goes, "Ugh, let's fake it. You there?" But da da da. And he's like, "I this is bad. I don't like my job and, here." And then once Reluctance. Reno actually drops in to, and he sees Cloud, yeah, his personality changes because yes. he forgets about the mass murder, and he and it becomes a petty squabble about, "Hey, I'm trying to do my job, man." It, Fuck off. Well, it also becomes, ooh, here he is. I get my payback, right? It, the, the, there's the line that he yells out what's, where Cloud tries to stop him, and he just he yells out. It's the most passionate Reno ever gets. It's like, not while I'm working. Let's give him and the like, two-step. And then afterwards, we get to see them, like, looking, <laughs> essentially watching the news. Being so like, this, oh. this is where it gets me, right? As a Turks fan. I say, with the two fucking stupid old uh, FF7 models, the old, I have the yeah. little fucking, you know, I say this with them sitting right there. And I, you know what? I'm probably going to buy those those new ones. They look amazing. The new ones? Yeah, why They not? look They're incredible, cool. right? They are sitting around and they go, yo, Seng, what the fuck is going on, right? Did we really need to do that? And Seng looks them in the eye and goes... Someone would have been forced to. We might as well take the guilt on our shoulders so that we bear the responsibility. And you're and like, so that. So what I love about that is that that's really weak. Like that's a weak justification. You think that's and noble? It, and it's so weak <laughs> that, that he Reno doubles goes, down. No, 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 you... no, 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 no. He says something second. He says yeah. first. He says that. And then he go, they look at him, and they make a noise. And then he goes, or another way to look at it is this is the comeuppance. We've been taking from the planet for so long. It's finally time we gave something back. And then Rito turns to him and goes, do you see, uh, Rude, do you seriously no, no. believe? Yeah, it's like, it's so weak as a justification that they turn to him and be like, do you even believe that? Do you that? actually just believe that? And he just kind of shrugs because yeah. he doesn't care. Yeah. So here's your takeaway. Sang is absolute trash. Yeah. So the way to fix Reno and Rude is to make them bad people, but the but to dump more of it on Sang. Like, Sang is the worst person ever. And this will make it super sick when he gets punked out later. He, uh, I mean, and remember too that like there's a point to which, even when, even though it's mainly about saving Marlene, Aerith is kind of like okay to go with them because in her eyes, oh, they're the Turks are okay, they're not that yeah. bad, you know, <laughs> fucking, like yeah, they're the they're the button pressers, they do it, and you literally, it, it's, I, I feel like there might be some weird way in which it's almost like. You can look at it through a weird, like, Bushido lens almost of, yeah. like, take the responsibility of the awful thing on yourself so that others won't have to bear it. Is is there's a way of looking at it in I, a noble light? I, I think it's way simpler than that. But the it act looks is like so... saying Because in, in Crisis Core, Seng's like a... Pr like, it's so wild because in Crisis Core, Seng goes with you to Nibelheim and as Zack... And Seng is this totally chill, pretty cool guy. Mm. And you get this feeling now that it's like, oh, yeah, hey, like he's punching in at nine in the morning and he punches out and this is his job. And it's like, what are you going to do? Not do your job? Orders are orders. You, 
Your job's to do what the fucking guy tells you to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's your job. And Reno What are you going to fucking What are you going to not do your fucking job? And Reno will Reno and Rude will be cute about it when it's like, "Oh, there's Tifa. Ah, uh, oops. Uh, you know, there's Aerith in the flower garden. Hey, get out of the flowers. Do you, can you do that over there, you know? They'll be cute yeah. about the whole thing and, you know, um it it, it, it it captures the energy of you're supposed to love to hate these guys or hate to love them. They're supposed to be those thorns in your side, but they're pretty all right, but they're on the wrong team. They're supposed yeah. to be whole horse. Yeah. They're supposed to be, we could have been party members, but we're not. And then this this goes really well with the thing in Wutai where you, you help save the girls on both teams from Corneo. And they get the call to track you down again. And they check, they like Reno checks his fucking watch to see if they're still off the clock on their vacation. And they are. And they just leave. Because it's like, oh, there's, there's, there couldn't be less personal hard feelings here. I'm just working. I'm just working. Yes. Which is why I'm so happy with Reno's line of like, not while I'm working. So uh, the the biggest triumph of this game is we were the biggest worry that I had for this game is oh man Cloud's been fucked up up and down the street like his personality's been all over the place I really hope they don't screw up these characters personalities and every time any character in the entire game gets a chance to show off their personality it's the best part of the game yeah it's what you're looking for the whole time I'm actually upset that the um the affinity uh, scenes mm -hmm. were missable because oh you should go look at the mall because there's good shit in all of but them. that's what I'm that's what I'm saying I, I have seen them all right okay well no that's my that's exactly my point I went back and I watched them and I went holy fucking shit these are important and the fact They're that you really important the fact that you only get one is like you are you are robbed of uh, major they, they Character. They really want you to replay the game three times because yeah. there's three sets of dresses and there's three of those. Three, three and... of each. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Like, you are robbed of major characterization in those scenes, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so those are those are fantastic scenes for all three of your party members. Um, now, to, 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 to bridge a little bit, because, well, I mean, we're going to traipse you through the fucking flowers, so to speak, and get where we got to go. But to go from there, that reminds me of, of talking about, like, um, likable evil or a li uh, or likable, like a likable evil. evil, you know, um, that takes me right to wall market where you get, uh, the trio of Don Corneo's curators who sex traffickers who become these kind of allies that are struggling on their own. And the, the, the framing is that you kind of are like, well, Corneo has his thumb on everybody and everyone is suffering in their own kind of way. And that's perhaps why they're kind of are like, oh, um, Chocobo Sam is going to trick you so that you don't even get a shot to go to the mansion because he's yeah. trying to do the right thing. But and it's like Chocobo Sam and Madam M and Andrea are fucking scumbags. They're literally literally lining girls up for the house this is their job there is just like uh what's his name um front door man leslie leslie where it's like these are all people who are like listen the dawn runs this whole thing we don't like this we're trying to tell you what the right thing to do is is don't do it but they're still participating in this process and effectively like it's a weird way to look it, at it, it where it gets it, it gets really bad when you discover that it's not just sex trafficking but it's consistent sex trafficking because the girls fucking disappear right like hey what happened to the old one don't know don't know she's gone well we do know what 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 does that mean there's a lever yeah there's... but it, like that you ask them well, what does that mean they go i don't know yeah i don't know it's very clear that it's a I don't know because I don't ask because I don't want to know. Exactly. And and then it it doesn't take a lot of effort to put two and two together. Yeah. And figure out where they went. But um in this case, the idea of like these characters all being noble in their own way because they have their own things to look out for, you know, Chocobo Sam and Andreas in particular are like 
they've you know they've got their loves which is their chocobos and the stage and yeah, Madame whatever. M is, is is also against it and when she shows up at the at the the Coliseum but you're just like you guys at the end of the day you're at the end of the day you're a hundred percent part of the problem <laughs> get you're like a really integral part of the problem charm or no you know yeah so there's that there's and there's a little bit of that weirdness to it um now the third place to go in that line of of thought and to me it's the fucking peak is we haven't really talked about it much i've mentioned it a couple times when we the game is brought up i mm -hmm. always had a big old hard on for rufus i always thought rufus was rad as a, I as, think Rufus gets the the coolest like in terms of like what a what a evil man line in the entire game in the in the remake in which he sees Cloud and sees that he's a soldier and he says yes. oh you're a soldier I so I guess that means I own you you're my property yeah and yeah it's like, yeah fuck! <laughs> Rufus, what an asshole Rufus is incredible at being a piece of shit and he's also a fucking cool badass and hey. You know what happens when you're super evil, but you're attractive? I guess that means you're morally, morally gray. gray. <laughs> That's right. So, 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 as someone who, you know, and, and I mean, hey, like, even, even down to, like, um, like, the, what, what, even, even though the, 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 the less we talk about it, the better, but when he's in fucking Advent Children and he's like, oh, you know me. I'm, I'm fucked up in a chair. Huh? I got the geostigmas. You know what am I gonna do? Turn the new leaf over. I did, <laughs> but like, he's fuck off. shows up here, and I'm like, this dude is gonna be so weird for anyone who doesn't know what's going on. But he just drops in and gives Cloud the sickest one on one in the fucking game. Yeah, and then pieces, Had and he pieces in a cool way. What an incredible upgrade to that to that fight! I couldn't believe how insanely cool he was. Uh, yeah, you know what I love? He got about he, he got this... Nomura eyesed with the fucking. Oh, absolutely. He like literally the belt skirt. He couldn't just he couldn't just wear a pair of white pants with the no, extra it's layer be under like the like jacket. A skirt made out of scraps and belts and jackets and shit. Um, uh, from dark. Uh, what was it? Dark. Dark nation. Dark from dark nation. To Dark Star. Yeah. Interesting. The coins. So, anyway, Rufus is rad. Whatever. In terms of characterization, the evil, but not as evil, but cool, but whatever, is like one half of the game. And then I feel like they, they took the time to do all that for all of those characters because they're beloved, right? And not only did they not do it for some characters, they doubled down in a room in which everyone is calmly discussing how they just killed hundreds of thousands of people. Hojo is so repulsive to the other people on the board that when he talks about how to breed Aerith, yeah. they all just get up and leave the room. The handling of that was really interesting he never gets to do it they cut that no. whole scene out they remove the scene entirely but they put the dirt in his brain instead and go this is what he wanted to do and it's and the effect is is like he's like yeah he that we know exactly what he's thinking and he's getting giddy thinking about it you know and everyone is so freaked out by just how disgusting he is they can't even talk to him about it it almost makes it like even like wor it, it almost makes it worse in the sense that like it doesn't go down that way but by seeing him kind of going like Ooh, hoo, hoo, you're just like oh my god oh my god they actually they actually made a really significant change to why that idea comes up in the original is like this research going to take like 200 years there's no fucking way we're going to be done with this bullshit evil research in the lifespan of Aerith. In this one, it's okay. So we're going to do some crazy shit. We're going to need spares. So so let's let's make some spares. So this is where we now connect this moment to and connect everything about Hojo in this by the way who like like sufficiently ugly looking. Congratulations. You know, but even somehow, like, 
everyone gets attractive, he gets more attractive, but he's still like he's he's scum attractive. See, in that way, he still got the the weird ass <laughs> face. But in 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 co compilation world of like you know the post fucking uh, content, post seven content, Lucrezia becomes this kind of super noble good figure that is like much more fleshed out than she is. And is actually the dumbest bitch that ever was. How? How does this, like, you know what I mean? How does this, like, super duper nice person end up being, I, I don't understand. Because she is the dumbest bitch that ever was. When they were just little, like, fucking <laughs> 3D little dots moving around on a board and she's like, I gotta go with him. And you're like, okay, sure. And Vincent gets cucked. But <laughs> I think it was I think it was Butter Buns that just put up a, a photo of Lucrezia from uh, Dirge of Cerberus, and with the text like I wish FF Seven was real so I could go back in time and cyber bully Lucrezia. I I don't <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I can't piece together how the Lucrezia that we that 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 they build off of in the sequels <laughs> hooks up with this guy now who we've seen evolved into this. It makes no sense. But Don't whatever. Don't worry about it. Whatever, whatever. Ignore that. Um, but yeah, uh, uh, Hojo is the... So it, it, Hojo gets this extra because Hojo is the actual problem. Of course. More, more than Sephiroth, more than Genova ever was. It, it is literally all Hojo's fart. The fault. It is his fart. It's all Hojo's. Yeah, it's his yes. fart. No, but it is everything is Hojo's fault and his balls too. Yeah, and his balls. <laughs> yeah. Um. And and the fact that he is he's also one of those people that is you know willing to, like, uh, he's he's willing to like he'll take on the backseat role to see Oblivion in that way for the for the the, the knowledge so to speak. So yeah, mm -hmm. everything, everything, everything. Definitely. He he is he is in the in the in the universe of FF Seven. He is literally the worst person in the world. He's the catalyst. Like on planet Earth, he is the worst person. Things Still were fuck him. Things were pretty bad from the natural order of things. You know, mm -hmm. um, Meteor and, and Genova existing on their own are not great. But uh, yeah, Hojo's manipulations one hundred percent set everything into motion. So there's that. And to to spend like what seems to be like a full hour showing just how disgusting he actually is is perfect mm. okay so um to uh, that in his lab and to, to, to sort of into some uh gameplay stuff in particular his lab is terrible it's the worst part of the game okay so shinra building is like mind-blowingly beautiful as an office space Yes. I'm like, this lavishness is absolutely what's to be expected. I can't believe how insanely gorgeous this whole thing walking around is. Like, it was incredible. And the, the, fucking, the fucking jerk off museum. Yes, yes. Beautiful, right? And, and then you go into the VR chamber and you get that fucking just perfect setup for everything like that was so great there there is so much in, probably like the 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 most subtle perfect thing in the game is the vr simulation of shinra's story of the ancients mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because they show you the ancients mm -hmm. and they show you like the life stream and all this shit and the ideal and Midgar. there was a moment that got me and it tricked me and i went holy shit we finally get to see what the ancients look like. No. That's not what the ancients look like. This is the Shinra propaganda piece version. Yes. Of what the ancients look like. And that's why there is a natural Midgar formation in yes. the background. Yes. Um... <laughs> and it's like, that's so fucking slick and gross. Not only did it get you, it got fucking Barrett, Cloud, and Tifa because they were yeah. going, whoa, oh, that's crazy. Wow, they were swept up in the illusion. It was gorgeous. Also, golden gun on the wall right there the whole time too, uh, yeah. in the in the museum exhibit. Um, but but Hojo's Hojo's lab, 
Um, here's what I was, I, I wasn't going to talk about that. I was going to say that like there in particular, there, there was, there was two moments where I was like overwhelmed in my chest with what was happening in terms of just music and gameplay swelling together. Yeah, Hojo's Lab is pretty terrible from a gameplay part because of all the materia switching and having to split your party and all that crap. But I want to give it a big clap for managing to implement almost every single fucking stupid ass enemy that has no reason to exist, such as the whack-a-mole robots. All of the weirdo, uh, uh, you know, fusions. Although no, um, no tri tank triceratops. That's later. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, that's later. Um, also, uh, sh shout outs to the Genova Lab making way more sense. It's giant, of course it is. Well, it and it also now resembles um, um, uh, Nibelheim, Nibelheim way more than just being <laughs> like, oh yeah, she's in that fucking tank over there. Like, it's like, what do you mean she's right there? What the fuck you mean she's right there? You know what a great little moment in that sequence is? Is when you switch to Barrett. Uh, sorry, when you switch off from Cloud and um, Barrett to Tifa and Aerith, and they see on a video screen Cloud and Barrett are stuck behind this like a hundred ton, ten foot thick steel door. Yes, yes, yeah, and, and they're, they're swinging they're, at they're it. Just, they're just looking at each other, and then Barrett kicks it, and Cloud <laughs> almost shrugs and gives it like a lazy hit, hit with, the, with sword. the sword. They're just like, "What do and we I'm do?" Like, you two are fucking idiots. <laughs> this is what happens when Hojo locks the doors, guys. <laughs> the the instant the girls leave the party, Cloud and Barrett's brains fall out of their asses. <laughs> they're like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, yeah. They're just do. Um. So so. Uh. Let the Battles Begin is a theme song for the fucking ages. And the fact that they remix this thing like 80 times and it hits different every time. Uh, is... Do you mean those who fight further? No, I mean Let the Battles Begin. Uh, is it the boss version? M regular battle theme. Okay. Well, those who fight further is the... Those who fight further is the boss theme. Are you sure? Uh, I believe so. Let the Battles Begin, if it's in remake, us. I was, I was, oh, well. yeah, I was like hunting them down to get all the versions to listen to, but you get all these mixes of that, right? And, um, they get the, the intro version, the cock tease version, the one that keeps going up with build up and then the final drop one, right? And then yeah, there's like 20, but the oh, fucking, each. it was, it was the one you enter the garage of, Sh of the Shinra building and they start playing the version that's just, um, it's just the background synth without the foreground and then these brass fucking horns coming in with such bass to them and that moment kicked in right as Tifa was flying through the air in like a mid shore you can twist as I was pulling up the next action and I kind of just freaked out and went like oh my god I'm getting hit with it so hard right now yeah and then this the version that also plays when you fight the monster in in his in Hojo's lab the first phase of that monster has a same mm -hmm. moment where you're just like this version of this song is like unbelievably good these are songs yeah. that have been remixed more than any other song I can imagine in video game history outside of maybe <laughs> Zelda. And yeah. they're hitting harder than ever. How did yeah. you one-up the 80 versions of this in the past? Like, I don't know, but you did, you know? Unbelievable. A lot of work. The, 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 yeah. Um, the lab also gives you an excuse to hang out with the party member that would have been the easiest to botch, which being red. Yep. And yep. he's so perfect. Great. He's so and, fucking perfect. And you 100% like make it makes sense. It's like he comes in the last hours of the game. It doesn't make sense to give him a character build. And it also lets him engage in almost every fight remaining in the game. Yes, right. Um, because he's not a real party member. Dude, he's a lab rat dog. Like talking about music, <laughs> like Genova kicks and starts fucking going and you're just like i'm oh, in but it I'm there's in little it. tiny pieces of it right. around that, the whole around the whole thing. game yeah totally <laughs> and then it finally comes in and you're like there it is there it is and it goes 
and then you get to phase three and they just drop it on you like the full thing and you're like oh it's 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 unbelievable and then i don't know if you caught it right at the end of of what the, the kill animation um as that as the original is ending in phase three mm-hmm. they drop in uh the intro notes of safer sephiroth there too mm-hmm. so it all just fucking hits and you're like this is wild it's all so. these little pieces hey man oh, 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 beautiful, oh, oh. beautiful 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 okay uh it's it's great to fight a uh, motorball on the bike yeah uh, you don't have to get off because yes fighting fighting uh arsenal and then motorball right after one another would have been too much because those bosses are really similar yeah um, I have a thought about that. I'm going to put a little note in it. I'm going to come back for a second and I'm going to say uh, Barrett getting a moment to like talk shit to Shinra. Pretty good. I, I was talk- I was talking to Eli about this. I think Barrett's the best character in the game. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's fantastic. Um, he, the, I, like the fact that I, you go in expecting Mr. T and he gets so much more than that is really satisfying. Um, and you know, there's the, there's the little bits and pieces of just like exactly how him and cloud are like yeah you know we we like ah fuck you merc you know you want your money fine but like you know but but he gets these other little things that are like really really strong and i want to say that like the fact that they walk in and they're robbed of their revenge in the original and sword in the back bam that is a really nice moment because you go ah fuck me i don't get to ah you know it's been taken from you your quest so what would happen if barrett did get to have his revenge and here you get to see it you know, and he he reluctantly throws him up, and then he fucking gives it to him. He gets it all out, you know. And then in a weird way, you go, "Oh, but you're also Barrett, so you're gonna let him walk and pull a gun yeah, on you. you." You're also a moron. You're an idiot that can't in actually that the, foresee the whole where the situation scene lasts is going. Like two minutes, and Shinra's like scrambling away, and the whole time I'm like yelling at the screen. He is obviously going for a gun barrett doesn't have that in him he doesn't get it he's just oh you know so you're like you he lets it happen it's like of course he would let it happen it's infuriating but there it goes and then they pull the fucking what on you by having barrett get stabbed and i'm like uh he doesn't he doesn't just get stabbed so uh, let's back up over the course of the game the whisper mechanics have been showing up way more often the longer the game goes on as events seem like desperate to go off the rails. Yeah. And then it hits the absolute peak where Barrett doesn't just get stabbed. He gets killed. He fucking dies. Fully. Drops. They go. No, he's, he's gone. fucking dead. He's gone. And and um, Genova Dreamweaver. And you're like, uh, 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 wh- what? <laughs> you know? And then the moment it, it wasn't no, it wasn't the moment it fall it, it wasn't the moment you 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 kill Genoma Dreamweaver, but it was so the the fucking the whisper comes out of him and it's like yeah that doesn't fucking happen right, um it was when you go up to the roof, and you see the two of them, holding each other the two uh, uh, Sephiroth clones, and then you're like oh Jesus fucking Christ okay Advent children. Right. Right. Here we go. They're just literally clones are just like turning into him, you know? Yeah, he was always able to do that. And the thing is, is that that was supposed to be a clone leaving with Genova's body. With the head. Yeah, no, with the with the body, with the whole body, right? And here it's like, oh, that's not. That's two clones. That's why you don't fight Genova life or birth or rebirth. You fight Genova Dreamweaver. Mm-hmm. Because Sephiroth and the body already left. Um. So that whole thing is just yeah. You're you're like okay, this ain't real. This is nothing. You're looking at absolutely nothing right now. Um, but the actions are being carried out. So, mm-hmm. um, I was worried in my head about like I kept thinking I'm like you know. One weird thing about this is if this does truly take you through and stop at Midgar, then 
it's going to end on a pretty flaccid note because yeah, you you, you beat Motorball and you you end at the fucking highway because like like you, you you know after Rufus, which is a weird out of nowhere thing, like you get the the alternate team hanging out in the elevator fight, which thank God they didn't make you fight in the elevator with this type of system. That would have been, would have been fucking awful. horrible. Uh, although yeah. I I liked it when you when it what happened on uh, on the second reactor because you were the team was split up from each other. I like yeah. that that moment, but yeah, the double elevator would have been terrible. So you fight him in an open space, and it's like it's a, it's a tank that is as involved and and crazy as Rufus is. By the way, yeah. Um, and that th fight really shows off something that drove me crazy. Which is the when you hit chapter seventeen, the game's like you've been equipping every character with a full set of materia, right? And it's like no, I've been switching it between characters. I've been pulling assess off of ev off of cloud and dropping it on Barrett back and forth on the and, and then, then on like, Tifa okay, on the PHS system. Fight this boss with Barrett and Aerith, the only mandatory fight in the entire game that has those two characters in it. Um, it's the only fight in the entire game where they say Barrett and Aerith are going to be the team. Okay. Uh, sorry. So I'm just, I'm just looking here. Um, so that was the Genova body that was being carried. Yeah, I, I saw people. Yeah. Okay. Screaming. Got it. Correction. Correction noted. Thank you. So, yeah. um, that aside, uh, y you get you get the fucking the road fight into the end, and then I'm like, yeah, that's a weird way to go out. And, and then, it's like, but wait. There's more. And then you get that, right? And then you then you get a lot. So Sephiroth shows up and Aerith just stops bothering and just looks at the camera and says, this is a sequel like the Evangelion movies. <laughs> this is a bro. Okay. That joke that I made last week about 7.77, you cannot remake, was dead on. And this is where I have to say, I have to say, I feel bad for the kids who are very young who looked and said, I am going to not play the original. I'm going to wait and experience it for the first time with this game. Because right. we were asked uh, way back when about um, should... I play this now or should there was a letter time where someone asked and said should I play and this we were like always play the original or should I wait for the new one and we and play I the original. said play the play it play it now play it now don't fucking wait play it you'll get more out of it they're so different you have time you have so much time to play it go play it you had five <laughs> years at least you had 17 years before that right so, so some people didn't play it and 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 now you get this thing where I'm like this sucks for people who walked in not getting what was advertised because the the what they're going for here is supposed to hit you if you know what's up and it's a it's a so, ballsy ass move that they played for everyone who is, did play it it's kind of funny because the actual ending in that it's a sequel I feel like we actually talked about it last week to the point where we don't really need to talk about it all that much. Rebuilt. But, but what you're bringing up right now is actually the thing I wanted to talk the most about. Yeah. Uh, I, had a, I had a list of predictions that I made while going through my streams. And uh, I nailed almost all of them. Like, the, the, I feel super smart. But whatever, that's not important. I went through that on my stream, right? I have two friends who are both in their mid-20s. And both, during their playthrough of the game, kept asking me, hey, man, I, you know, I've never played FF7. How do you think they're going to handle disc two and three? And I would go, ah, I don't know. And then they hit the end credits. And then they were like, oh. And I talked with them at length. I have one big problem with the game. And it has nothing to do with my experience. And that is, my friends pretty much have no idea who Sephiroth is. Other than the fact that he is a bad man. Yes. Uh, I, I went and tracked down an interview with, uh, I think it was Nojima, who said, we didn't spend a lot of time characterizing 
Sephiroth in the game because everybody knows who Sephiroth is, right? It's like, no, they don't. That game's super old. So so here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. Uh, uh, in the same way that Aerith looks at the camera and basically is like, ah, you know what this is. Um, Sephiroth being literally about to lick Cloud's earlobe in this in this game. Is okay, thank Wooly, thank you. Because I got to the end of my stream and I was like, did you guys expect Sephiroth to be like, put it in my ass, Cloud? Because it really, there was some fuck me up Cloud shit going on in that. And like, he is so into it. And when you go off of what Sephiroth should be at this point in time, which is who? The fuck God are you? God complex mystery man. Who the fuck are you? What are you? What? Huh? Right? And it's like, no, the Sephiroth that that you have that is obsessed with this fucking nobody that that uh uh uh, uh you know was in on the on the on the team is the one that it's like I'm he's obsessed with him because he beat him so right? because cloud I... killed him and defeated him that that's where this whole obsession comes from to the point where he's more about cloud than he is about fucking genova yeah and and I, I I somewhat recently uh, played through at least disc one, right? You can correct me, guys, if I'm wrong, but I don't believe Sephiroth is ever on screen once during the parts of the game that the remake covers. His, like, I don't think you even see what he looks like until the flashback. His sword is. Yeah, his sword is on screen. But calm, yeah, he's, he's calm never is, on screen once. Calm is where the the you, the, the telling of the story happens, and right? that's where you get to see him. So, so they just jam him in there, and they jam him in like he's Marty from Back to the Future. And welcome to complaint number one. Okay, my first yep. issue with this game is we are watching Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, and every forty five minutes. Voldemort is whispering in Harry's ear going, Ooh, Harry! This, this, is, this is... So it's funny because people complain that the story is too much like Kingdom Hearts. And I I was confused about what they meant originally because I thought it meant the spectacle of the final boss fight with the buildings and shit. No, they actually, most people talk about the big fucking Kingdom Hearts monster you fight at the end. But the thing that is actually like Kingdom Hearts is the way that Nomura and his team write villains is the villain has to show up every couple of hours to remind you that they exist and taunt you and then literally fly through a portal and leave. I hate it. I, 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 I was expecting an amount of Sephiroth to be present because he is fucking Sephiroth. His his status as like uh, through osmosis in the video game industry cannot be denied everyone has heard of this villain and they know the deal oh my friends who didn't know what his deal was recognized him and knew who he was of course because but, that's what but they didn't know why they're supposed yeah to because the first thing you know about ff7 is cloud and the second thing you know is sephiroth right so yeah. so of course we're going to put the thing that is on the poster in the game in very very prominent force but yes. I was hoping after that first, you know, moment that they would lighten up a little bit. And the and, and I guess I didn't especially knowing where things go in the fu in where the, the, the where it's supposed to go, like I was hoping that they wouldn't plaster him on so hard because They do. They very plaster him on. Because there's so much to build to. And I and, and I mean and I it wanted to give that a chance. There's two great moments involved with Sephiroth. We talked about one last week in which Cloud starts having one of his little freakouts and then Tifa turns around and there's nothing. Nothing. I, I love it because Cloud's tripping balls a lot. A lot. And there's never anything there. And then he has one of those freakouts in front of Genova and you're like, oh, everyone's going to turn around and see there's nothing there. And they turn around and he's there and they all see him. And Here's, then Cloud almost seems confused that they can see him. Sephiroth shows up so much that he literally cuts the bridge in front of Cloud and creates an obstacle for them. 
and they don't ask about him or go, hey, what about that guy? What's the deal with that? And the whole time I'm waiting for the party to be like, so what's the deal with this guy in you anyway? Or who, what's the, what's, the, what's, why is he involved in our operation right now? What's, ha and no one asks anything, right? They just, uh, the, what's weirder than that is Barrett, Tifa, and Cloud specifically, not Red and not Aerith, who we're going to talk about in a bit, literally know the entire plot of the game already. But Barrett, Aerith, uh, Barrett, Tifa, and Cloud are constantly being cock blocked by nonsense ghosts. And I don't think they ever go, what's up with that shit? Well, they do, but then they don't, then nothing happens. And the same thing goes like for everyone. Like they're dragging everyone. Hojo away everyone. and they don't even go, oh, what, what right. is that? And here's, and, and you can, listen, you can, you can say that time ghosts, you can say that time ghosts are also effective at making you forget that they exist once they're I gone. actually really like that they give them a name to make it easier. Whispers. Whispers. Yes. Yeah. I like time ghosts. It, it, it's funnier. Time ghosts making you kind of like, I'll, you can even say maybe they make you forget about they exist the moment they're gone. I, right? I think my favorite one is Hojo about to Who spill knows? the beans and then they throw him into the elevator. <laughs> oh, no, you don't. Because, yeah, he like, stares at him oh, and he goes, no, you, you, you're... Like as 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 far as I'm concerned, from what I know of Cloud's character, yeah, if yeah, Hojo yeah. actually just told him, Cloud might like pass into a coma on the spot. Uh, he would probably go through exactly what happened when Zack died. Yeah, yeah, he it, would he would fall apart. It would, it would hit him again for sure. Um, uh, and also, what's interesting is that like I was kind of looking for signs of um, Tifa like showing doubt in Cloud's story, so to speak, but. Like there, so, there wasn't I, I much actually, of that. Um, I actually have uh, some details for you on that about but, but, the original. Okay, hold it though, because I, the second thing I had to say about Sephiroth showing up so much is that yeah. he shows up so much that not only does he create a literal obstacle that nobody then asks about, that when yeah. he fucking shows up again and then again, and then Cloud runs after him, right? You can like when when um um. Because <laughs> when Barrett dies, like there's a moment where you can turn around to go to the group, and the game's like, nope, go after your, go get him, and you go, yeah. and then it turns out it was the, the the clone boys, and then they're done, and you run back in the room, and then uh, Barrett just goes, you get your man, and he's like, nah, he got away, and I'm like, is there going to be a follow up question? No, nope. no follow up. <laughs> He just goes, you get your, yeah, that guy that's been following us the whole time. Do you get him? You get your man? No? All right. Well, anyway, no. you know. So, so uh, the but Tifa you were gonna, about Tifa, yeah. So here's the thing. In the original, uh, Tifa does not doubt a single thing about Cloud until he tells the story of the flashback in Calm. And she immediately realizes that every single fucking thing that he said was complete bullshit. And in, in, in she calm. holds on to that for the most of the game. Right. So he says, OK, so I was there and I hung out with Tifa on the mountain and then I fought Sephiroth. And she's like, OK, all those things happened, but you weren't there. That's complete bullshit. But she doesn't say anything. She's yeah, just she, like, what the fuck? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. In this game, she does ask him, hey, how long has it been? And he says five years. And she goes, huh? And they drop it because that's wrong, too. And that's when she starts to like poke at him for like, so whatever happened after you came to Midgar? And he gives a bunch of like non-committal, like kind of depressed answers, and they kind of drop it. Um, right? What's what? So what she does poke at. Wait, him wait. What? What's the time gap between um, falling in and Hojo shit to to the Zach uh, carry? Carrying him out. It's five years from the Nibelheim incident, but it's actually been way longer since they've properly actually hung out. It's been since Cloud left town. Since he was a kid, yeah. Right. So when he says, oh, it's been five years since we've seen each other, that's wrong. It's been five years for him, but it's been way longer for her. Okay. That's why she gets confused by it. By the whole thing. Right, um, right, right. Yeah. I think they should have put the calm flashback in here somewhere. I don't know where they would have put it. And that's clearly a giant sequence, that right? Will okay, probably because, be the beginning of the next game. So he had the helmet because he had the helmet on, and he was too ashamed to show himself. And uh, yeah, but the last time she, <clears throat> it was about seven then. From, from yeah, right. Okay. So when he says five, she's like, "Well, that's obviously not yeah. right." So yeah, you were saying. Um. 
So they they do poke about that with uh, with her. Um, I think there is a massive thread on our subreddit that goes over almost every line of dialogue that comes out of Aerith's mouth in the game mm -hmm. that I would say conclusively proves that she has enormous, explicit knowledge of nearly the entire timeline of events. Uh, to yeah. the point where she even gives most of that knowledge to Red as well. And Marlene. <laughs> and Marlene. <laughs> like... Five, tell, like imagine you get you touch the lady and you find out everything you're doing is fake and everything is fake and it, none of it's real. In, in her in her affinity scene, she more or less tells you, "I'm gonna die. I have the Don't script. Don't fall for me. Don't fall for me. Yeah. I am now going to make the pose that I make when I die. Yep. 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 Also, um, well, yeah. Depends on how you want to do, you want to look at it, but like there's 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 the don't fall for me, and then there's also the like you're not Zach. I didn't write you eight letters. <laughs> I sure didn't. <laughs> you get fuck out of here, bro. You know. And there's the there's a lot of you know there's some stuff at the end, but it, it, the way she talks about it is that she is very terrified of changing events because they do work out. But the end, the end game of FF Seven is a cataclysmic disaster. So this is where like, Midgar is annihilated. Tons of people are dead. The world is wrecked by the weapons. So this is where the point of no return becomes a really weird gamble because I think I have my guesses as to what is being set up, but. It might like if it's good, then it'll be good. But it's and very it's gonna be the worst. It'll be the worst. If it, exactly. So there's, there's a couple little pieces that you see. One, they are totally going to be including um, Genesis in some form. They bring up G soldier types. You they, see the deep ground area. He literally says the S type and the G type soldier. Right. Yeah, so you're like, okay, great. Confirmed. And Geel is real. Confirmed. Genesis is Genesis real. Genesis is going to be around. Confirmed. All that stuff is there. He's going to be standing around um, at Nibelheim <laughs> in the fucking flashback. But I think the most important detail yeah. is that early in the game here and in the original FF7, Gacked. you see. Uh, Sephiroth is able to exercise total mind control over Cloud. He's able to turn on Genova cells and make Cloud do whatever he wants. In the original, Cloud is never able to break free of that control until he reactualizes his personality and integrates his bullshit, right? Here, in the dead ass last scene between Cloud and Sephiroth, Sephiroth tells him to join me, and you can see. Cloud's hand twitch mm -hmm. with the control mm -hmm. and he fights it off. Mm -hmm. The entire plot of FF7 falls apart the instant they go to the Temple of the Ancients and get the black materia and Sephiroth goes, give that to me. And Cloud just literally puts it in his hand. And that's where the end game pops off. Is that will not happen. He might still get it, but Cloud's not going to put it in his hand. That is the biggest thing that happens in that planet, in that world, right? So, w what? So what? I mean, if he can, okay. I read no the, meteor means a very different story. I read the Twitch. I read the Twitch as, um, as like, just a weird, uncertain, like a weird moment of uncertainty. But, like, mm -hmm. if the control aspect is completely removed because we're past this at this point, um, then the only thing that can be said is he won't do it, but the fucking time ghosts might. Well, time ghosts are dead. That, well, that whole sequence and is this, about... Oh, right, 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 right. So, so, so the whole point... That, that, sorry, okay, so that, that, that was where I was going to go. Was, uh, what I was going to say is that... Um, you're right, that, that doesn't make any sense because... The point of putting this in right away in the first game, mind you, is to go like, well, we've killed fate, so now anything can happen. Anything can happen. And there's that nice line by Aerith. It's like, um, 
she misses the steel sky because this is an open sky which of infinite possibility crisis core um, gives you more elaboration on that because you f you find out that she hates the sky she hates yeah the the you know like uh, exactly like the, the infinite possibilities and in, are scary. in in japanese i think it translates to something like i hate this new sky um there's a lot of stuff you can actually find out if you look at both uh, translations. Apparently, or, Barrett, sorry, the translation in the original. When Sephiroth shows up on the highway, Barrett goes, "Is that the guy from before?" And then, um, Eris says, "No, it's not." But in this it case, it implies that there is original Sephiroth walking around and the one from Advent Children walking around. Who, I I people. don't know. But like in English, he just goes, hey, asshole. And she goes, don't. And uh, yeah. that's not at all the same context, you know. But um, but in any case, I I am looking at this like, OK, so that's that's the gamble. The gamble is we've destroyed fate. We can change destiny. We don't know what's going to happen at this point. Right. And it's a nice little thing where they show Barrett dying, but then being fixed by the ghosts. And then they kill the ghosts and they go, anybody like Aerith's, I'm going to say Aerith's probably going to live because the idea of having a whole series of games about changing fate. It's the number one. That it's the number one. Yeah, yeah. Like they'd be fucking so pointless. Mm -hmm. But they're they're teasing you with like it could be anybody or no one or everybody. Well, or The most anything. psychotic thing was when they hard cut to the past and they go, oh, yeah, Zach made it. And I'm like, you fucking yeah, no, what? Um, you what? Um, so. So there's a lot of confusing shit with that. There's. So time ghosts you, so, exist in all time uh, at all times, including the past, present, also, and future. Also, hey man, we we want to we want to talk about people who don't understand what the fuck's going on. Zephroth was bad. Zach is the biggest part of the is the biggest pop off in the ending. Like I I like put my hand over my mouth. I was like, oh my god, I, 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 I couldn't it? believe it. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe. Yeah, and, that guy, uh, that and, fucking what? Then I talked to my friend, and he's like, who is that guy? Yeah. <laughs> Shit! That sucks! Yeah. That sucks! Yeah, yeah, man. yeah. yeah. Who, who literally, who is this guy? Is that Cloud's brother? What's going on? Did Cloud not go Super Saiyan? <laughs> Cloud, and, Cloud is Super Saiyan. I got it. Okay. What happened? And what's really confusing is they have a really, like, the, the stamp Dorito bag or whatever the fuck it is flies in front of the screen and did you catch this by the way because i didn't catch it until people told me the dog is the dog from the zach timeline not the not the um the current time not the current timeline and there's different it is, it is a, stamp it has is different, different versions stamp yes stamp. which means that is a alternate series of events yes that's what that's which why that's why the bag of chips I flies by no flies by and he's what does that mean he's carrying a cloud he's carrying him back to the city like, is the next game going to start with the the bombing run, but as Zack with Barrett and Jesse and Wedge? <sighs> I <laughs> I expect full fuckery to happen, but not until like not but not for the most part, because I think the, the I think the as a product, right, the appeal of this game is also still to offer fans of the original game a remake of their of their old experience. Yeah, so uh, so that I've needs been to be talking, in in the product. I've been talking about this for a while, and I I think this is a lot of people would probably agree with me. They're like, we can we've changed fate. We can do anything. I bet they're still going to do ninety five percent of the same things because that's with what, some important changes. That's what you're people still going to go to Corel. Mm -hmm. You're still going to have the date on the golden saucer. That's what people want. This is what we want, right? right? And it, and 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 these these nods towards a, a, a change and towards the plot differences and towards like what else can be happening with this i think that is still something that is like as a bold as a change as it is um you, you can't yeah, actually, i still want to you can't take away the moments people are hoping for you know i still want to have like expanded versions of like goofy shit totally totally sounds a great shit in there. And, and they set up um, they set up characters to return hard you know yeah totally um with the level of swearing Eric's, in this game, Sid is going to be a fucking yeah sailor. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, there's a lot of... So, how do I put this? Like, I've been thinking about, like, how the actual events occurred in FF7. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sephiroth's final line, which is you have seven seconds. Yes. Um, there are two interpretations of that. By the way, when he starts counting down... And in the, at the end of the fight, 
did you kill him after he said eight? I don't remember. Because he starts I, I summoning was... Meteor. Yeah. And then you have to kill the fuck out of him. And mm -hmm. I killed him when he, he says nine, and then he says eight. And then I did enough damage to kill him there. And then when the cutscene resumed and he said seven seconds, I was like, ah, what? Okay. So I just happened yeah, to... It, it looks like an enrage. Okay. So I just happened to get lucky and I killed him at eight so that later on when they're talking, he says seven and it's connected. But So there, there's two things that are happening there. One is... He's obviously counting down to Meteor. Of and course. in fact, there's even a loading screen that literally says it's seven seconds to Meteor. Yep. Um, also, however, there is another moment in FF7 that takes seven seconds, and it's the drop to stab Aerith. Does it? The, the drop to stab Aerith takes seven seconds. Um, and Who the fuck counted that? That's crazy. Wow. Okay. Um... So, I've never heard of that. Okay, it doesn't. Everyone disagrees. All right, fair enough. Uh, uh, the main thing that I'm thinking about is that I think back to Aerith has to survive for a big reason, and that reason is that in the original game, if Sephiroth hadn't have killed her, he would have won because the him killing her drags her prayer of holy to the planet instantly and then he stops it and then when you kill him the prayer goes through mm. right mm. if he just hadn't have done that holy probably would have never gone off and he would have totally won okay um the so 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 uh, uh, the other thing I was gonna say about that that moment too with the seven seconds is, I like there being a, uh, a bit more of uh, like the moment that Omni Slash comes out of, now kind of has a bit more of a of, a, a, at least a background context, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because you're like, what? Where do they end up right before that goes down, and like they end up, at in space staring at the meteor traveling towards the planet and like they're literally in this other time dimension reality type of thing that they so that into. other time dimension is a specific location from the original it's the void that you have the omni slash against sephiroth in but th that's what i'm that's what i just said yeah, yeah. so i was actually talking to max right now okay yes no i, I was just saying that exactly that like they dro they drop into the omni slash void and I'm trying to, and yeah. I'm, what I'm saying is, I like that they've given that context now, because originally that void was like it was just a, a cinematic moment, you know. And now it's a Kingdom Hearts land. Um, <laughs> it's it's the portal to Kingdom Hearts. Well and, and, well, and here we are, right? So here's the thing about this: all of this stuff where you're getting the full set. I didn't know if they were gonna give you a full Sephiroth fight at the end of the first game. They give you like a. a they give you like two, I feel like. And that's why I'm that like That fight's super long. Yeah, and I'm like, not only do they give you that, but they give you the setup for the Omni Slash dimension. And I'm like Which will be a fight. Which will be a fight. That will not be a cutscene. Yeah. Yeah, it will. But I'm like, I'm I'm only left thinking I wanted less of <laughs> I wanted less. I, I wanted weird. I wanted the build here. I, I feel because well, now I'm like, well, what the fuck is the final boss the gonna be? The Sephi load is being fucking spooged, and I'm like, oh no! Like the Put like the big in. fucking uh, the big fucking uh, 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 whisper monster, and the three the three the arbiter uh, of fate, uh, the three spirits, uh, the, the the colored spirits. Who, by the way, I'm pretty sure Max was the one who figured out that those are the kids from Advent Children. So, um, Th those are those are Kadaj, Yazu, and Laws. Possibly, yeah. I saw I, exactly. Yeah, I got a, I got um I got a message about that. Uh, um, because but you fight them and then you fight the big monster and then you fight Seth and it's like this might as well be the original boss rush of the original ending. So the thing about the three being. The kids, by the way, like yeah. uh, they have the same weapons. Um, they do. I like. I'm still not 100% sold on it, 
but the fact that they turn into fucking Bahamut is... It's, if, if it's not a reference, it's as close as you can get. Um, They summon Bahamut, and on top of that, like, I was thinking about it, and it's like, Sephiroth's able to... My, my head cannon is that Sephiroth is able to time jump because Genova is bullshit and does not reintegrate into the live stream like it should. That was the whole plot of Ad Advent Children, was that Genova does not actually reintegrate with the live stream, and that even though you kill Sephiroth to the point where he is essentially atomized, his soul doesn't die, so he just recombines with people, right? Uh, I thought but that it's about the fact that Sephiroth needs to continue existing in Cloud's brain in order to be able to manifest and that oh, it, and that if he do, if Cloud ever forgets about Sephiroth and moves on or just doesn't care anymore then he will become then Sephiroth will be dead for real I don't know cuz no one's ever going to actually forget him <laughs> right but also we need to have a reason why Sephiroth can actually go back in time which is pretty obviously what he's doing and I think what he's doing is he's not physically going back in time. He's possessing versions of himself from earlier in the live stream. And if that was the reason, right, then the kids who are also Sephiroth clones would be able to do that to a shittier extent. And thus manifest as big old time ghosts. Uh, regardless, I actually think the mechanics of how people are time traveling is the least interesting thing about the game. Is by it, far. I mean, is it time travel? Yeah, it's time travel. Is he it... uses he uses lines of dialogue straight from Advent Children. Well, I want you to look in I'm going to go get I There is an old meme from Advent Children that you may have forgotten. Okay? I'm sending the meme to you now. Okay. Okay. It is Sephiroth saying, I "Shall will I give, give you this pair?" And holding up a big ass pair. Right. He says that line verbatim in the final fight. Okay. Like um, it is a hundred percent the guy from Advent Children. I mean, here's one thing. They're certainly not afraid to take all the all the, the compilation material and canonize it. They've shown you that they have the balls to acknowledge uh, Dirge of Cerberus. They have the balls to acknowledge uh, uh, Crisis Core they have, and, 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 and uh, Advent Children and all these things. And they're not... <laughs> I say the balls too, but it's like for better and for worse, right? So you want to talk about for balls? For better and for worse, the, they're literally acknowledging the, Gacked. So, I, you know I what I mean? I was able... They're doing it. I was it. able... Uh, somebody put it up on the subreddit. Before subreddit. Crisis is in there as interview, well. There's an interview out there with Nomura where they talk about... Uh, they talk about uh, the, the remake and when it was planned to happen. And Nomura is like, the FF7 remake was planned to be the last game in the compilation of FF7. Ah. Oh. They were supposed to be... This was supposed to... And so you think back to that <laughs> PS3 tech demo. Do you remember that? Yeah. And how they kept saying, no, that's totally not a remake. That's nope, nope. And it's like, shut up. It super was. It 100% was. That was, that was going to be it. And then it got pushed around because other projects and yada yada. Well, let's be real. Right? 14 years ago, it wouldn't have lived up to it. No, of course not. It, it, it um, It's almost for the best that it was 23 years later. And with that context, you look at the end of Dirge of Cerberus, which is the stupid cliffhanger with Gact, and you're like, oh, that never had to go anywhere. Gact is backed. No, but that <laughs> never had to go anywhere at all because they were always planning to go back in time and do things differently. Dirge of Cerberus was never going to happen. Oh, but if, as like long as in, in if, canon. if we fuck with time, then it doesn't matter how stupid it gets. Yeah, Deep Ground's gonna get whatever, you know. We like can, the main timeline is allowed to be ruined 
Because we're switching over here now. Because we're planning to switch to an alternate. Oh one. boy. Oh boy. Hmm. That depends on the well. That depends. That's a hard theory that 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 requires this idea we're seeing now to have been written back then. Yeah, that's the requirement. And right? they they probably would have had a lot of Genesis with Gak stuff in it. Well, the, the, but now the that's Sephir not going to happen. The Sephiroth obsession bit definitely comes from an interview where he he says it himself. He's like, yeah, like, yeah. He's like, he wants Cloud's PP. He, he wants his he wants the dick. He wants the dick. He wants. Um, nom, 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 nom. Oh, did you see uh, people going through the Japanese dialogue during the final battle between uh, what characters you switch to? I did not have Aerith on my team. I had Barrett. Okay, so. Is that affinity-based as well, by the way? Uh, no, it depends on how well you do in the fight, I think. Like, if you knock him back, you get Aerith. If he knocks you back, you get Barret, something like that. Oh, okay. Um, but, um... Crazy. I didn't even, I didn't even get Aerith, but apparently uh, he says different things. He frowns at Tifa if you take control of her. So, so in Japanese, uh, if you pick Cloud, he talks the shit that he always talks. Mm-hmm. If you pick Aerith, he tells her that you can't protect him. And when he, when you play as Tifa, he says, go away and will not speak to her if he, she's ever controlled. Well, because she's getting in the way. She's getting in the way of all sorts of things. Those giant, it, like, those giant yabos okay. are keeping the dicks apart. Okay, but th think about this. Think about of course what Tifa she needs accomplishes. to go away. Think about what Tifa accomplishes in the course of Sephiroth's pseudo-gay stanship. She's the one who helps Cloud put his brain back together. She's the one who causes Cloud to get the drop on Sephiroth back in Nibelheim. And she's the one actually getting his dick. Of course he hates her. She is, the, she is like the worst thing that ever happened to Sephiroth. Well... Tojo, balls. Well, yeah, you know. Um, Can you imagine how different things would have been if Hojo and Lucrezia literally just told him, "Yeah, you're our kid, and we 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 you know messed you with genes and stuff." Instead of, "I was born in a fucking tube from a space alien." Is this my mom? Is this my mom? You've got to be my mom. You know what I really like about Roche? Aside from Zach, every soldier ever is like falling to pieces mentally um so speaking of that actually um so yeah and, and this is shout outs uh because i got uh i got some some i got a cat someone caught this that the um the dude who uh goes hey Yo, uh, you're Cloud, right? Stay here. I'm gonna go get, um, Kunzel, or, or, or yeah, Kunzel or Kuna, uh, or whatever he says he's gonna go get his friend. That dude is a character from Crisis Core as well. Yep. So he's straight up like, uh, uh he's he's a, a, a clean reference. He's a soldier line, second class. Someone that knew Cloud back in the day. Um, yeah. Clash Crisis Core also has the soldier who says, "I would love to get stepped on." <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, 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 I wouldn't mind being being stepped on by um, Scarlet, you know. So, oh, he's voiced by Crispin Freeman. How about that? Who played Rude in Advent Children? <laughs> Weird. Okay. Um, what the fuck with Wedge? So Biggs and Wedge now completely okay, but. You can't have too much thirst, so Jesse gotta go. Jesse's alive, dude. Her headband and her gloves are on the table next to Wedge uh, to Biggs. Is she? Yep. Jesse is totally alive. She has probably quit Avalanche, which is why she leaves her gloves and headband. But um... she. But apparently, the chapter descript descriptor literally said says she's dead. It says Which that chapter descriptor eighteen. It says that um, no, well, not eighteen. That's the last one. Uh, uh, the one, the the um, the tower, 
Um, let me let me fucking see if I can grab this here. Dut, 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 dut. Okay, so uh, Biggs walking, waking up in the hospital. The gloves on the bedside are definitely Jesse's. People think that symbolizes she's alive. Um, the chapter text says Biggs is wounded while Jesse perishes. The chapter text describes Jesse as perished. I'm going to put that as a question mark. I bet you anything she will show up at the gold saucer. So that she'll bring me to one thing that I, uh, one, one little bit here that I actually uh, want to touch on. And I don't know how you feel about this one, but um, knowing that this is a, a uh, knowing that this is the, the fucking, you know, change, change the future trunks <laughs> trunks timeline oh yeah right um oh man so max is in the chat hey max she says the bigs part is 100 percent a red herring but she will be alive in zach's timeline oh oh, god. Jesus. oh my god this is gonna be a mess oh my god <laughs> fuck are Shit. they gonna is this the is this chrono break oh this might be radical dreamers is this chrono break <laughs> You're going to play half the game in Zack, and then you'll switch to a portal, and you'll be Cloud? Oh, this... Oh, man. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, I, I'm just going to have to put that in another fucking uh, partition of my brain for a second. By the way, if we have time and Max is still up for it, we can get him in next week to follow this up, because we're fucking, like, it's 740. I got to get fucking dinner. Yeah, 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 exactly. That's we can't wild. even be doing this that much longer. No, no. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say was that... Um, well, one, uh, the, the beyond the little the, the bits I've talked about, like the game is fucking unbelievable, just firing on all cylinders, like almost the entire time. There's so much cool shit. I it's, just, it's great. I just have questions about what well, I just, I don't like that much Sephiroth in it, and yeah, I, and that ending is a huge gamble, and I don't know if it's gonna pay off. I hope it does. Um, so. But there was a, a thread talking about it on our subreddit that I read through, and there is a sentiment that is pretty negative, but I do actually agree with, which is ending your game with anything could happen, look at all the possibilities, is easy to fuck up. It's super easy to fuck up, Star and I know Wars. this as an Evangelion fan. Yeah, sure. As an Evangelion sure. fan, this type of ending makes me a little nervous. Force Awakens, bro. But... That's de facto more interesting than a shot for shot remake to me. Because a shot for shot remake, I will get what I already know I have and can imagine in my mind. Whereas something new could be something new and cool. Yeah, it, it definitely I would I would I would I would I would prefer to roll the dice than play it safe. And now, yeah. that's not right or wrong. That is a personal preference. And it, you know, it de again, it, it 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 kicks mud up if you were waiting because this game was marketed as a remake and you thought that's oh, what man, it was. was. It kicks was mud on your to, shoes. I was talking to some friends of mine who were really bummed out because all they wanted was a remake. And I was, uh, we came to the conclusion that if there was a dash in this game's title, a lot of people would be way happier with it. <laughs> okay. If there was just a single dash. Okay. Because th th that would be like, why isn't it called re just remake? Make. <laughs> yeah. Remake. Um. I also, wanna... before I forget, I have to give a shout out to Page One, aka Peach Saliva, who totally came up with it before me, and I'm jealous. She is convinced, and I have to agree that the next game will not be called FF Seven Remake Two. It will be called FF Seven Reunion. Oh, that would be good. That would be good. I am also putting my own hat in the ring for possibly the third one as Regenesis. Please kill me. I want to die. Um, I wanted to say that um, there's something about redoing all of this that is like, ah, and I touched on it the last two, but it's like there's a lot of tragedy in Final Fantasy VII, and I feel yeah. that those moments being saved and made happier are kind of like um, uh, I want to see characters kind of going through this and like 
I want to hear them discussing how awful these fucking bad guys gotta go. I I I feel yeah. like when you when you when you make it safer by making people survive more, and 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 you take away some of that tragedy, you lose the opportunity to show you just how fucking uh, uh, bad these villains can get, and in some cases, like what the heroes do to stop them in the motivations they take you know you kind of you soften these moments and i'm a little bit afraid of that you know um i want so i was waiting very excitedly to see how fucking broken you know like a lot of people can get because ff7 breaks people you know yeah the, there there is some things that could happen i mean there's infinity things that could happen now that i would be unhappy with there is one thing to me that would absolutely ruin this shit. And it, 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 it feels like one fear kind of thing, right? I'm overall very hopeful and very interested. But the one fear is I swear to God, if Sephiroth and Cloud go to that fucking time dimension again and goes, Cloud, you don't understand. You have to team up with me to fight the even greater villain. Which I'm gonna flip my shit. Tell I'm me, freak out. Tell me you didn't think for a second. That, I thought that's what he that was, say, was about to happen. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. That'd that, be so awful. That was God. A, I hope they don't. That do was that. a moment. That was a moment where it was like they might make the team up happen so that they could go defeat Gact. <laughs> like if, if Guts goes to Griffith and Griffith is like, no, Guts, you don't understand. I was doing it to fight the devil. Like, I don't care. Yeah. I don't want it, you know? Um, and, to, and again, to all those who, you know, uh, were experiencing it for the first time. And a lot of people just got hype at what they saw. Um, how you digging that cat with the cape and and, and oh my god dude cape, we talked about it the, last the week because it was out of out of just, nowhere just walks but up then and goes, we beat, oh, we beat no. the game and it <laughs> never get it never comes up once you get all like, this I, red. I thought we were gonna go to shinra headquarters and we were gonna see a fucking kate sith doll on a desk at least you get all this red Nothing. 13 and then you see a fucking kate sith walk up in this one moment and you know like they could have <laughs> just done it with reeves Right? They could have just done it. They could have just had him look out the window and go, ah, oh, no! But instead, he's controlling the cat. Anyway, <laughs> whatever. That's why. It's like, man, this is not for your first journey. This is not for your first experience. And at the very least, you know all those people now are going out and playing the original now. You got two, you got two three, four, five, six years to fucking go play the old one. Um, I guess yep. I, I want to justify something I said earlier and then I'm done. Uh, so I prefer the dice roll than the, the straight remake. Um, and I'll be very honest that a lot of that is because because it's a dice roll, I get to play Metal Gear with the trailers. I get to play... <gasps> What what is that? Is that diff what what does that mean? Is that is that the alternate time? And I get to do See, that I, I speculative, dodge, yeah. Like, lead you up you shit. enjoy that. I dodge those things because I, I heard Barrett got stabbed in the last trailer. Like he sure did. Fuck that! I would have been so mad. Fuck that! You see Sephiroth like you. You know what you see in that last trailer? You see uh, the Not cut interested. scene where Sephiroth is in Midgar in the VR simulation and Meteor hits it. Oh fuck. <laughs> Just stop. I'm 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 not, you know, I'm I don't want to see any of that shit. Um I I get that. I don't know. I don't know. Because dude, like, here's the problem, I guess. The gamble that was like some of those things, including Advent Children, left and hurt FF7. FF7 was hurt by a lot of this follow-up content. And if we hurt it even further. God damn it, man. So here's why I'm not too worried about that. Because those things were hurt because the characterization of the characters was inconsistent. The characterization of these characters is perfect. It's still risky. This could have been, or this could be, pulling it out of the dirt. Um, I... Could you imagine if they fixed Gact? <laughs> Dude, Could you imagine if they actually like Genesis shows up and he's cool? For I once? I I want 
to be i want to be I, yeah hell house <laughs> i want to be optimistic and i am about this gamble uh i just need them to lighten up on the sephiroth please <laughs> although we've already we've already gone there um, all right so to that i will tell you no they're not gonna <laughs> they're not gonna you're likely gonna get more sephiroth harry it's me voldemort we have to team up to defeat the true evil <laughs> JK really? Rowling <laughs> the only the only way that you're going to see less Sephiroth is if in Zack's timeline you spend a significant amount of time there and he is dealing with Genesis instead just just and then Genesis is the one showing up in visions and going loveless Characters a final act that no one knows. Characters do have moments of subtlety in this. There's a lot of non-subtlety. There's a lot of non-subtlety, but there is some subtlety. So it, I know that they can do it. You know? But that's it. That's it. That's it. Otherwise, fucking, I mean, woof. I, 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 I got to enjoy the rose-colored uh, uh, everything, you know? Um and and the combat and the feel and the flow and the time stop and the you know the the parry oh, materia and the counter stance hard, hard, and the count and hard the, mode is totally worth it it's a blast yeah and just and like one shotting one of Sephiroth's phases by just playing swords with him properly by cro oh, by yeah, counter stancing awesome. and by parrying properly you can oh dude counter stance is busted to shit oh my god like god you just damn. kill enemies outright if you yeah, hit that don't even need to talk about it. quadruple like fucking quadruple like killing it you know that's all that but we'll see where this this fucking new shit goes all right I'm fine with that all right good game a little a little hesitant about the future but good good game good Aerith turns to the camera and says this is good isn't it. <laughs> 